Okay, Rick, my question for you this time is, um, I want to talk to you, I want you to talk a bit about the importance, uh, what the credit score is and the importance that it plays in uh, being able to buy a house. Well, Sharon, certainly credit score is very important. Uh, if you're looking at uh, high ratio mortgage, uh, there are minimum numbers you need to hit in order to qualify. Um, but I should mention, it's not just the actual number itself. Right. Uh, lenders will look at other things on your credit bureau beyond just the score. Yeah. But uh, long story short, you want to shoot for at least a 680 uh, credit score. Uh, now, I should specify that uh, the credit score that I'm talking about is not the one that you see when you pull your own credit. That is That's a right. consumer credit score. Uh, the one that I look at when I'm getting someone approved for a mortgage is a uh, different algorithm specifically for mortgages. Yeah. And having said that, usually if uh, your credit score is good on the consumer side, it's going to be mm -hmm. good on, but it's probably not going to match up exactly. And right. uh, also your credit score will change throughout the month, depending on what your balance is on your credit cards at the time that the score is pulled. So yeah. even, you know, if you pull your score at one point and then you go back and pull it two weeks later, it can change a little bit. Yeah. Um, so yes, uh, long story short, you want to have a uh, 680 score. Um, you can get away with a uh, 640 score sometimes. Mm. However, you probably won't be allowed to borrow quite as much. Uh, with a 640 score um, and usually they want the primary borrower and the primary borrower is whoever has the higher income to have the 680 score um, right. so uh, but they're also going to look at you know do you have a lot of uh, things where you missed payments uh, this will of course negatively affect your credit score but if you know you've got a recent history of a lot of late payments the, the uh, lender is probably going to want to know why, or the insurer will want to know why before they, the insurer being CMHC or Genworth, uh, they're, they're going to want to know why you're missing those payments. Uh, you're, they're going to look at things like, uh, do you have past bankruptcies or consumer proposals? Uh, some lenders, if you've got a past bankruptcy, they won't touch you. Uh, so sometimes, you know, in those situations, if it's a more recent bankruptcy, we might have to go to an alternative lender. Um, do you have judgments against you? Uh, mm -hmm. Things like that. These are all going to appear on your credit score. And uh, even if you've got the requisite score, if uh, you know they don't like the answer to some of the other issues that appear on your bureau, then that could be something that they just say, no, thanks. We're not going to do the loan. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's one of the reasons that it's so important to uh, monitor your score. Uh, to look at your bureau and uh, see if there's anything on there that's derogatory because especially if it's not accurate you want to get that off and mistakes yeah. do happen on the credit bureaus I've worked with several clients uh, you know they may have had issues in the past but uh, they've settled those debt issues but the uh, creditor never removed it from the bureau things like that so uh, yes if uh, this is one of the things that I will look at when we're doing a pre-approval uh, so you don't get an unpleasant surprise when it comes to closing and you can't get your mortgage financing. So uh, one of the most common reasons that uh, real estate deals fall through is because people can't get the financing. And, you know, a common reason is their credit's not good enough and they might have a good score. Um, but, you know, if mm -hmm. uh, they've got these other issues that they haven't addressed, it can cause problems. So, uh, yeah, I think that... Uh, I should mention, however, if you don't have a 680 score, uh, we can still work with you. You just need to have 20% down payment. If you've got 20% down, we can go to alternative lenders and they work with people with bruised credit all the time. And uh, yeah, we can start you with a B lender. It is, uh, or an alternative lender. It is a little more expensive interest rate wise, but it's only for a year is you yeah. get your score. Yeah. Uh, back up during that year uh, and you qualify, then we can move you to an A lender at the end of that year. So it can get you into the market, stop paying rent for a slightly higher interest rate. So that, that can be uh, excellent. And if they get a little more money down, they can do that as well. And I yeah. also want to add that, you know, while you can put them in that mortgage for a year and they can be in the house, uh, you're happy to help them. Likewise, I'm happy to work with them, give them ideas and suggestions on what they need to do 
on that credit score so that this problem goes away. So that it, they, can, they, you know, like we, we're willing to walk through them with that. But I may also add that um, why wait until you're doing the pre-approval for those that are listening to this now? Take a few minutes, go check your credit score. For sure. Um, pull your pull your whole report, not just so you see the number, but you make sure that all your payments are there. Make sure there's not something on there that you forgot that you had. Like there are some places now, like, you know, I can order something on Amazon and Amazon has their own card. And if you're not careful, that bill comes in online. You don't see it in your mailbox. You don't see it in your in your uh, email. You can forget that it's there and you cannot I've, pay. I've had so, all sorts of all kinds for, of scenarios today yeah. that even more so that you can see that with. So I would encourage you to take it, look at it, look at your, your credit, your, um, your uh, social insurance number, make sure it's yours, make sure that's your address that's there so that they don't have you mixed up with someone else and look at it. And if you have any questions, talk to you, talk to me, and we'd be glad to give them advice. And um, so then when they are ready to go work on that mortgage, um, it's already, it's already taken care of. It's surprising how simple it can be to uh, increase your credit score. Uh, there's some really basic things that some people do that, uh, you know, pretty much uh, drive the score down. It's it's an algorithm. It's not a judgment of who you are as a person or, well, I mean, lenders look at it as your credit, credit worthiness. But uh, at the end of the day, it's just an algorithm. And some of the things in the algorithm don't actually make all that much sense. Um, but yes, I'm happy to take a look at uh, your credit report and work with you to see what you might be able to do to uh, quickly increase the score. Oh, and the other thing I should mention is uh, when lenders are looking at your credit, uh, they're also uh, looking to show, to see that other people are willing to lend you money. So they usually have minimum amounts of uh, credit uh, that have been advanced to you. So they'll usually wanna see at least two different lenders uh, where you can borrow at least $5,000. So a yeah. lot of financial people will tell you, advisors and gurus and whatnot, you know, just get the smallest amount of credit that you can can and don't let them raise it at all. And it's like, well, that's good advice not to run up your credit cards, but you do need a minimum amount of credit uh, in order to uh, be considered for a mortgage. If you've only got like a thousand dollars worth of credit, it can be very difficult to get a mortgage. Yes, yes, that's right. So minimum 2,500, but preferably like, 5, Usually they want 5,000. At this market, uh, yeah. Yeah, and so 5,000 two sources. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I just want to throw in a little story, Rick, um, mm -hmm. uh, in wrapping this up. Uh, when I moved, made my last move, I changed my address and I had a little piece of land that I had bought when I was a teenager when I first moved to Ontario. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was not a lot of money, but I did like finance it, you know, and it was paid off. And it was a big thing for me, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that gave me my opportunity. That was my first foray into the real estate market. It was a piece of raw land. And um, when I moved into my current property, I changed the address and I sent it all out and did all of that. But the property taxes is a little piece of land out of town. Property tax are very small. It's not even something I think about. I'll get the statement and then I'll pay it up. And I forget about it. I go online and I pay it up and I don't think about it. Mm -hmm. Well, because they, for whatever reason, didn't get my address changed and I didn't get any notice, I didn't think twice about it. One day, and I, I'm going to say it must have been close to the one year mark. Okay. And, and I kind of woke up in the middle of the night thinking, wow, I haven't seen that little tax bill. No, I'm telling you, I'm talking something like, uh, I think, uh, yeah, no, it was three years worth. It was three years worth of taxes. I'm sorry, because the three years worth of taxes, um, I mean, you're talking like a hundred and change for the year. Mm. Okay? It was like nothing. Easy so it was very that. easy to overlook. And I pay all of my bills. And in the industry I'm in, you know, the financial integrity, my own personal financial integrity matters. And anyway, it was it was three years that this had gone on. And I didn't miss it. I didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. Woke up one night in the middle of the night thinking, gee, I don't remember the last time I saw a tax bill for that piece of land. So when I got up in the morning, I called the tax office up in that little town. And when the girl, aunt, when she pulled up my file, she says, well, I'm going to tell you that tomorrow this piece of land was being offered for auction because of default in taxes. Wow, good timing. 
Can you imagine? And I was like, no, 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 do I default on my credit, default taxes? Like it's mm. the last thing in my head, mind that I would have done. Yeah. And and I was like, okay, let me, can, can you take an e-transfer? It was just a little town. I said, can you take an e-transfer? Let me do it right now while you're on the phone. I don't want to mess with this up. I want to make sure you got it. I do not want you auctioning this off. I don't want this on my credit. But look how easy it was. Yep. I, I've, had, place, you I've know. had all, all sorts of examples I could give you of, you know, yeah. that, you know, some cell phone bill that, you know, they'd canceled the service or whatever. And there was one more bill they forgot to pay or whatever and forgot about it. You didn't even get a notice or whatever. Like, I mean, it's so simple, so easy to do. And when I think of people defaulting on property tax, like, how do you not know you got to pay your property taxes? I defaulted for three whole years. When I asked her about the bill, it was like, you know, just a little over $300. There wasn't even any extra fees on it. I'm like, that's it? She goes, yeah, but can you pay it in one installment? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, give me the thing and stay on the line. But that's how easy it is. But that's why it's so important to pull our credit score. I'll end it there. Just letting you know, everybody know this listing. It can happen to anybody for any reason. Don't assume that your credit score has no glitches on it. Take a look. Make sure. Take time to, to look at it and find out. And I should add, even for people that aren't necessarily looking to buy a home in the next six months mm -hmm. or whatever, Pull you should still be pulling your credit on a regular basis because you have to watch out for identity theft. So that's, that's a great that's way true. of uh, finding out if all of a sudden you see uh, flags on your credit score of uh, credit that you didn't apply for. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Thank you very much, Rick. That was a good conversation. Thanks, Sharon. It was great. And folks, please reach out to us if you got any questions at all. You pull your credit score, one extra set of eyes on it. Rick and I are here for you. We're happy to help.